Hey guys, and it's Ben and welcome back to episode 3 of your Bucket Minecraft minigame tutorials. Uh, today we're going to be looking at actually sort of starting to create the minigame, and first of all it's going to start off with making teams. Uh, before we do that, I want to take these two start and stop methods here, and just cut them, and place them into our game class, because that's where all the game stuff's going to be handled. And then obviously change the BC Warfare in here to game, and re-import everything. So... Before we do anything in our game class, I want to make in our handlers class another class called team. And this is going to handle all of our team. I'm just going to turn that off now because it's annoying me. It's, I'm just... It keeps on auto-generating constructors. There we go. Right, team. Like so. This is going to handle all of our... It's going to... We're going to... When the game starts, we're going to make four teams. We're going to say new team, red, new team, blue new team, green, new team, or two whatever teams. And the reason I do it like this is it's easier to expand upon your teams. Um, so instead of having just two teams, we could make four teams or six teams or 20 teams. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're making like two teams and each team will fight each other. Uh, but you could obviously expand this very easily with this, this setup. So the way I make teams is first of all, we want to make a, a private static list of teams which are going to be all of the teams and this is going to be equal to a new array list uh, which will have a team which is this class type so it's going to contain all of the types of team uh, and then we want to make a, a another like map thing which is going to be a private private static hash map instead of a list this time which is going to take a string and a team and then player teams I guess we'll call it and this is going to be equal to new hash map, which takes a string and a team, which you put the player's name and the team that they are in. So, down here, we want to make our local variables. So, private string team name. And that's all that this is really going to take. So, in our constructor, obviously, we only really need team name. So, public team string team name. And in our constructor, we can say this dot team name equals team name. And then we have to add the team that we created to our all teams. So all teams dot add all teams. I put a capital L there. All teams dot add this team that we have just created, like so. So now what we want to do is we want to actually quickly we're just going to make a quick method which is going to be public uh, string get name, and that will return the team name, which is our local variable, just in case we ever need that. So, now we're going to work with adding players into teams. So, we're going to make a public void, and we're going to call this add, and it's going to take a player in its parameters. So, say we've now just said, you know, uh, blue team dot add, and then a player. And so, we're going to add a player. So, to do this, we say player teams dot put player's name so player dot get name and the reason we don't put the player just the player in it is because that can lead to memory leaks and then we put this class the class that they have uh, typed in so this could be any type of the instance of the class they typed so the blue team they'd be put into blue team and then we want to do the same for removing the player from the team so public void remove player player now we don't know you know what uh, team they're in right now so they could be not in a team at all. So we first of all want to check if the player has a team. So to do that, we're going to make a, another team. So if they're even in a team. So obviously they should be in a team because if they're not in a team, they will have died and then they will have been kicked out of the game anyway. But just in case, we're going to make this team anyway. So public uh, boolean, public static boolean, and we're going to say has team and then player, player, player. And then we need to check if the player is in this player teams hash map. So we're going to return player teams dot contains key player dot get name. And that will just return if the player is in that player teams. And if they are, then they obviously have a team. So when we remove them, we're going to check if it has team player. So if the player has a team, then we're going to say we need to get the player's team. So we're going to make another method for that. So public static team get team from the player player, and 
first of all, we want to check. So if if the player hasn't got a team, like so, so if the player doesn't have a team, we're going to return null because they don't have a team. So we're returning null, and then we'll do null checks to check if they have a team or not when we call this method. So otherwise, obviously they do have a team now. We want to return player teams dot contains or dot get sorry player teams dot get player dot get name so that is getting the team that is associated with the string in the hash map player teams so if the player has a team we're going to get team of the player and we want to remove them from it remove them from the map uh, so player teams we didn't actually need that method but we need we need it anyway later so player teams dot remove player dot get name like so uh, we could actually make this a boolean as well so if the player doesn't have a team we're going to return false because it's failed and then otherwise we want to return true like so so if they don't have a team it's failed otherwise we're removing from the team and they have been removed successfully like so so that is how that kind of works and this is basically how I make team classes that is how I essentially make a team uh, this get team is going to be quite useful for if we want to say get team of a player. So we remove the player say dies. We're going to say player dot get team and then dot remove that player from the team because they've died. So now what we have to do is in our game, when the game starts, we want to assign people to these teams. But we want to make a couple teams first. So new team. And we're going to call this team red. And we're going to make another team. And we're going to call the other team. Blue. So red versus blue is our game going to be, and obviously this could be expanded very, like much so. So currently we only have two teams, and then we want to assign people to teams. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make an integer called i equal to zero. So this is just a, a local integer called i equal to zero, and now we're going to loop through all the players. So player player equals or colon bucket dot get online players, like so. Now what we want to do is we want to basically every person we get to we're going to add them to a different team so player one will go blue player two will go red and so on like so on and so forth and I'm actually going to do this a different way so remove what you've just done we're going to say for in I equals zero I is less than bucket dot get online players dot length and then I increment it by one so I plus plus so now what we want to do is we want to make a method that returns all of the teams. So public list or public static list team get all teams and this will return all teams like so. We also want to make another method which does public static get team and we want to get the team from the name so string name and so when the team name is put into here we want to get the team name from the name so to do this we're going to loop through all of the teams so for team t all teams and once we've you know we're looping through all the teams now if team or the team that we selected dot team name dot to lowercase or we don't actually need that dot equals ignore case not equals you don't really want equals equals ignore case the name that they've placed here and it's the public static team get team it's returning the type team we're going to return the team that it has found like so otherwise we must return null because it hasn't actually found the team with that name and there's no team with this name that exists so what we can do now is and end in here as well in our constructor we're going to trim the team name in case there's any random spaces anywhere. That just gets rid of any unnecessary spaces at the start of end of your string. So if it was like that, it would just get rid of that space, just in case you make any mistakes there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say i equals zero, i is less than whatever. So what we want to do is we want to make every other number a multiple or a, a blue say so to do this we're going to type if I modulo 2 equals 0 so if I do if I is an even number it basically 
if i is even because every other number is even every other number is odd and seeing as we only have two teams it doesn't matter um so if if i modulo 2 equals 0 then we're going to add them to the red team otherwise we're going to add them to the blue team i guess an easy way of doing this would be saying uh, team dot get team and now we're going to say team dot get all teams dot get at i okay and hmm, actually no okay right. so we actually need to revert we need to revert to the old way of doing it so like in i equals zero and then we're going to look for the players so we're going to say uh, team dot get team so we're getting a team from the name not the player ignore that player thing and then team dot get all teams dot get at i plus plus uh get at i or just get at i and then dot get name so get the name of the team and we're going to add to it the player that we've looked through so what this is doing is it's getting a team at a team name Okay, and as we're going to get all of the teams that are there, and we're going to get the team at i, which we're going to increment in a minute, and get the name of that team and add the player to that team. So now what we want to do is we want to check if i is greater than team dot get all teams dot size i equals zero, like so. So if i is bigger than and i wants to be equal to one sorry so i'm just gonna uh show you in bc wolf i'm just gonna make a, a main methods so public static uh, void main string args if i had a list so list of strings strings equals new array list string and i then said uh strings dot add one okay and then i did system dot out the print line strings dot size like so and then i ran this i would find that it returns one because there's one thing in in this string um and then if i printed out strings dot get at zero it would return one but if i return strings dot get one it would give me a exception because it it only goes up. Although the size is one, it returns. You have to start at zero. So what I'm doing in the game class is actually instead of starting at one, we have to start at zero. And if i is greater than or equal to the team size, we need to revert i back to zero so that when we're searching for it, the index is one below the size of the uh, list, or the array list. So that's going to add them to the team. And this is going to work for as many teams as we made here. So say I made like loads of more teams. It would just, it would split up the game evenly into the amount of players. So that is how we add players into the teams that we have defined. And that is how we make a team. So I hope you learned how to do that today. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.